I'm here for Trackfield 97 with Marilyn Okoru, two times British Outdoor 800 meter champion and European Indoor 2011 bronze medalist for 800 meters. So you had quite a uh, rough uh, season due to injury. How do you feel that it's uh, gone overall? Um, I just feel like I never really got started. Um, obviously I changed training base and was having a really good winter and unfortunately indoors I pulled my hamstring um, so you know you're always then trying to come back and trying to get ready for the upcoming season it was uh, unfortunately really bad timing and I just felt like I never really got going you know, had a handful of races before going into a major championship so just not ideal preparation at all. Um, so did you expect much going into Commonwealth then after all the injuries? Um, <laughs> I guess well, you're super competitive, you know, and you, you always put yourself there and you never really want to turn down a place on a team because, it, you know, it's, it's such an honour to represent your country. So um, I had started to come into some really good shape. Um, I was obviously really nervous because I hadn't really raced much and hadn't had a chance to test myself and ultimately hadn't run that time that you go in with feeling confident. So, you know, but I always kind of believe anything can happen and, you know, I wanted to rely on my experience of running the race, but unfortunately once I got into it it was just clear that I hadn't really prepared quite right because you know the last couple of weeks I'd been training really really hard so I just went into it really tired um, so and sometimes you know last season similar but I came out running 159 so it's always touch and go. So for the uh, long term now then with your new group training with uh, Johnny Gray uh, how's that been? It's been a big adjustment. Um, I think everyone sort of thinks, oh, you're in Florida, life is all rosy. Um, when it comes to the weather, yeah, it's great. But, you know, I've had to, you know, really almost unlearn everything that I'd learned before. Not entirely, but um, in terms of training, it's completely different to what I'm used to. So there's a lot of adapting going on, um, a lot more endurance. I had to get used to, I used to have to get used to racing with a lot more kind of endurance in my legs um, and then feeling like I'm not very speedy so it's all very new um, but I, you know I have a lot of faith and confidence in it um, my training partners are great and I've you know managed to see you know how Dwayne's related to it it didn't come straight away I think whenever you change training group it's going to take you a couple of seasons to fully adapt um, I think I was slightly excited because last season went really well but I hadn't done a winter with him so um, you know I've seen um, you know what a full cycle looks like now so I'm really going to take that into this winter and, and next season and ultimately the time I moved was with in view of Rio so it's you know gave me the time to iron out all the changes and adjust and adapt and increase my mileage and get stronger and faster so um, you know it's almost it's it's difficult winter in it but I know it's something that's going to pay off in the long term. So do you think not just um, training wise but just getting away from the British athletic setup? do you think it's quite good to be in America and training over there instead of here? Um, definitely, it's been a real eye-opener for me in terms of myself as an athlete um, as well as myself as, as a person and just seeing how other athletes around the world um, prepare and train and you know and it's always good to take yourself outside of a the bubble as it were it becomes a bit of a bubble um because we are quite a small <laughs> nation as much as we don't think we are we are um and you know for me i was just looking for someone that understood the type of training i needed to be the best 800 meter runner i i could be and you know a lot of thought went into it i was a bit reluctant to leave the country at first but in hindsight it's the best thing i've ever done um and i've gone to you know an out and out four eight type coach I feel like traditionally we have a lot of endurance based coaches which is great which would have been great for me because obviously endurance is my weakness but it's it's knowing how to apply that endurance to a sprint type person and unfortunately I feel like that's where I've you know not quite hit the mark in the past so um, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to be out there and just taking it all in really so this season, so despite not really performing as well as you would have liked at the Commonwealth Games, I guess obviously you have now got a European medal from 2011 given to you. So that, does that make the season feel a bit better? Um, yeah, yes, of course, it's always nice to pick up a medal. Um, you know, I try not to dwell on the past. It was funny because I do remember thinking at the time when we were in the call room, looking at the two Russians, how nervous they looked. And, and normally you just think, oh, Russians are emotionless and... I just remember one of them was actually shaking, which um, was the one who directly I got the medal from. 
Um, so no, I'm really pleased that justice was was done. I, you know, it's always frustrating, you know, because I missed my chance to be on the podium, and you know, everything's a knock-on effect, especially in GB. If you get a medal, that opens a lot of doors for you. So I've had a lot of opportunities taken away from me. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, she, the, the you know justice was served. So and I'm, I'm elated with a bronze medal. And then looking back to uh, London 2012, you obviously had quite a good season that year in 2012, but mm. then didn't end up getting picked. Yeah. Um, what did? Uh, how did? It, do you think that was fair? Were you <laughs> given how you've been running? <laughs> it's um, a very <laughs> sore subject for me, as everyone can probably imagine. Um, you know, I'll, it really was a very decisive factor in, in me moving and changing coach and changing my setup. Um, was it fair? Personally, I'm going to say no, because obviously I'm the one it uh, affected. You know, I think if we had the simple US system, of course it's fair, because, you know, I wasn't in the top three. However, you know, there was a lot that went on and it really changed my outlook on the sport that I'm in, the British system, our selection policies. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that gets in the way um you know and it's it's kind of you know you don't really want to think about people having personal vendettas against you and things like that but ultimately that's kind of what came up in the media so there was a lot of just disappointment surrounding it I didn't understand why I was selected at all in the end because you know I'm so, I, I was told I couldn't go for the 800 but then I was selected for the 4x4 not having run a single 400 um and I thought felt like I was in fantastic shape leading into the trials and ultimately penalised for a bad trials if that was just you know standard across the board I could accept that a lot more but there were quite a few people that didn't run our trials um, also didn't perform at the trials and they ran at the Olympics so you know I just feel like there was a lot of inconsistencies um, I was told I wasn't the informed athlete I think running sub two almost six or seven times in the season shows you are in form I think we are human we will have bad races um you know and I went on to break the eight, uh, the 600 meter British record so which was pretty much the next week so um it was very very frustrating there's a lot that went to, into it but it was a big eye opener for myself yeah I was looking to more of a kind of like a positive view on athletics it seems that like the middle distance running um, for women at the moment in Britain is improving a lot with Lindsay Sharp running well Jess Judd coming through mm. um, what do you think about how it's going at the moment for women in British athletics and how it might affect you um, I think it's fantastic you know um, it's always been strong I think especially when you know people like myself and Gemma Simpson and Jenny Meadows really stepped up you know around 2006 2007 it was you know you know who's going to take over the mantle from Kelly Holmes but the difference between when Kelly was running I feel like there's a lot more of us that were closer together and you know we really you know sort of paved the way um I think it's fantastic to see so many people coming through um you know Lindsay's had a fantastic season Jess Judd's doing really well but you know I always <laughs> compare ourselves to the US you know um we're still thin off the ground so I don't feel like we can be that complacent um I think a lot more can be done to develop our middle distance um I think our eyes need to be a bit wider in terms of the types of 800 meter runners we have because we see a lot more four 800 runners coming through which I'm ecstatic about because for so long I feel like I've been the only one and people haven't really understood me um so you know that's another thing that I can feel like I can benefit from when I go out and learn all that I can from the US I can bring that back here because you know you go to the US nationals and you know it's going to take sub two to probably make their final so I feel like it's great we have depth somewhat but we're still a long way off in terms of times and performances and I think we sometimes just put our eggs in one person and it uh, causes a lot of pressure on the individuals um, I feel personally I've been I've experienced that I feel like Jess Judd suffered from that a little bit this year um, and I think we need to look at, you know, because with competition you develop, you improve. You know, I always run well when the girls are a lot quicker than me. So um, I think that there's still a lot we can do in terms of that. OK, and then for you then, for the next kind of three years, there's a load of big major championships, the Worlds next year, then Rio, and then obviously uh, the London uh, Worlds. What, um, what kind of changes are you going to do in your training to try and kind of move on to that next step and kind of podium it? 
World Championships and Olympics? Yeah, so ultimately that's what I was looking at doing. I felt like, um, you know, I was I was running quick times, you know, at the Grand Prix and things, and then I'd go into a championship and, and sort of exit at semi-final. I've only made the, you know, indoors I'll, you know, quite often make the final, but outdoors Berlin is the only global final I've made, the Commonwealth Games in 2006. Um, so just, you know, really looking at bettering my performances and getting that rhythm right. I feel like that's something that I've really struggled with. Um, so that's kind of what I took to Coach Gray. And, you know, because he made finals all the time. <laughs> and it's like, if you don't make the final, then at this stage of my life, it's like, I'm not just happy to be there. Um, but obviously the main thing he targeted was endurance, which can't be rushed. So obviously just going to be working on that, um, which I feel like I, you know, I did really well. Um, last winter um, and just developing my strength um, and injury management um, I don't feel like I've had you know major injuries but they've been a lot of niggles um, and a lot of them to do with balancing out my muscles and distribution of my um, energy and, and econ economy of running um, so just looking at things like that um, I feel like almost my speed has been neglected over the years so you know want to look at putting that back in you know it's it's all very well me running 52 and making the relay but you know I, I started as a 400 meter runner so I think my PB dates back to 206 <laughs> so I'll be looking at improving that and it's very tough trying to train the endurance say to a 4-0 type 1500 level and then also run 50 point but the girls that I aspire to run like Anna Chiara, Manuria Matola, that's what they could do. And, you know, I really believe that I've got a 156 in me and I feel like that's the kind of strength and depth that I need. So are you going to be running more um, 1500s then uh, in the coming season to try and improve your endurance and strength for the 800? Definitely. You know, Coach Gray was probably one of the first coaches that said to me, you know, you could be a really good 1500 metre runner um, because you have all the tools. It's just learning and training and preparing for it in the past in England I've always been told you can't run 1500 um, clearly I can my PB is 411 so it's just about having that knowledge I feel something that we're really particularly bad at in the UK is if we don't understand something it's wrong or we just neglect it um, so um, definitely you'll see some 1500s particularly early season for me that's when I struggle with them um, and that's where that strength comes in like being coming you know early season you're still in training heavy training phases um, but that's when I look to be running a good 15 um, and you'll, you'll definitely see some more 400s from me but it probably starts with a bit of cross country work in the winter <laughs> okay and finally this interview is going to be like the first of our kind of road to Rio campaign so what can you like share with us of the reality of being an elite athlete and what's it like to represent your country? Well, first of all, I'm so excited about this platform because it's it's nice to finally have a place where, you know, everyone can hear from the athletes ourselves directly without any kind of, or well, too much censorship. <laughs> and um, I feel like it's a great place to be able to voice real concerns. You know, I've kind of been having quite a few conversations with my peers and and even athletes from all over the world and a lot of the same themes come up you know the biggest issue is funding especially if you're not funded by a federation um, you know ultimately we love what we do a lot of us are in the boat where we need to survive as well we need to pay our bills um, so I think there can be there does need to be a lot highlighted I think a lot of people um, see us perform you know you, and it all looks gra glamorous and I always you will quite often see me hashtagging you know you see the glory but you don't know the story and I think the beauty of athletics is so many people come together to do the same thing but we're all from different walks of life we all come at it from a different angle um, and I think just highlighting issues of you know a lot of people are out there and working full time even and then coming to the track and essentially doing something that they need to dedicate full time to um, I experienced that last season. You know, I have been fortunate enough to be on, on the lottery funding system, which I was from 2008 to 2012, hence which were my best years. And, you know, it was tough getting to that point and it was tough not being on it as well. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, the basic things like recovery. You know, I was working at the University of Central Florida last summer, um, last year, and, you know, I would do like a six seven hour day and then try and train or train before it and travel with the team it's a lot it's a lot on the body when you want to come out and compete at the highest level and challenge yourself so you know there's a lot of things you know 
we will like to cover during this road to Rio but ultimately it's just so they can get a feel of of what it really takes to and what what some of us go through every day just to compete for our sport.